Great. Thank you so much. It's good. Okay. Thank you, Diane. So I know it's traditional in this group to start with some meditation practice. And um, so I thought we could do that. And I was wondering if there's anyone in the group who's new to meditation. No, looks like everybody's got some practice. So um, I just like to know that just to think about how, how to hold and guide the meditation. So what I'll probably do is just do some light guidance at the beginning and then drop into silence and maybe bring my voice back in partway through just as a touch point, but feel free to completely ignore my voice and just do your own practice. And um, does it sound good to sit for about 25 minutes? Is that kind of standard? Okay, great, let's do that, great. Um, all right, so I'll just invite everyone to settle into a posture that feels supportive. And sometimes it's helpful to find a posture that's that's upright and supported. But I also know it's, you know, it's late in the day and some people may need to find a more restful position and there's there's space for however feels best to your body. So listen to listen to your own system and find what what's going to support your practice best this evening. Sometimes it can be helpful to take a few settling breaths just to arrive. And kind of make a little bit of contact with the body and the breath. The breath and the body. Actually just feeling the breath really fill the lungs. And for some people, the breath or connecting inwardly with the bodily sensation is not supportive or skillful. So other ways to enter the meditation can be through finding those points of contact with whatever it is that you're sitting on, the floor, cushion, chair, bed, just noticing where there's contact. Maybe becoming aware of gravity. Heaviness. Not so important how we do it. Just finding, finding a way to Come into presence. The end of a full day. Maybe if there's sound in the space where you are, just becoming aware, sound. cars passing outside.
voices in the distance. Just knowing that sound is arising and hearing is happening. Days can be so full, so much thinking and talking and listening and reading. So much coming in, so much being processed. Just, it's just an invitation here to Find refuge in simplicity. Presence. Sound. Breath. Contact. So maybe choosing an anchor or focus for your meditation and setting a gentle intention to <clears throat> return, return to that throughout this practice. Maybe even to bring a bit of curiosity to how is it to turn towards simple presence? Could be uncomfortable, could be a relief, could feel inaccessible. And just letting that be known. Then returning again to the anchor.
And just returning to that intention towards presence. Awareness of the breath. Contact. Sound. The beauty of this practice is that we're always beginning again. It's never too late. It's always a good time to begin again. to remember our intentions.
So for the last few minutes of our practice, I'll guide a simple metta or loving kindness practice. And with metta, some people find it supportive to place a hand on the heart, just to connect with the energy of the heart. Bring a little warmth to yourself. And we'll just begin by <clears throat> calling to mind someone who we find it very easy to love. And it could be a human being. Could be an animal. Could even be a tree or a body of water. <clears throat> and just bringing that being to mind and if it's possible, if it's accessible, just connecting with this basic sense of care and well-wishing, affection friendliness, and I'll say a few phrases and you can just listen and receive them or say them after me in your mind. With this being in mind, may you be well. May you be peaceful and at ease. May you be safe and protected. And may you be happy. And we're not trying to make it so necessarily for this, this person or this being. We're just connecting with that energy of wishing well in our own selves. It's very wholesome and beneficial. When we focus on something, it grows. So again, with this being in mind, may you be well. May you be peaceful and at ease. May you be safe and protected. And may you be happy. And then as we've generated this friendliness towards this other being, we can sort of imagine it coming back towards us, allowing yourself to receive that friendliness, that well-wishing. Again, I'll say the phrases. And again, they're not meant to fix anything. It's just a, it's a practice like any other that we do. And we learn from witnessing what arises when we do it. May I be well. May I be peaceful and at ease. May 
May I be safe and protected. May I be happy. Everybody wants to be happy. And I want to be happy too. May I be happy. May I be well. May I be peaceful and at ease. May I be safe and protected. May I be happy. And we can imagine that as we fill our own cup with this friendliness and this care, that it can spill over. And there's enough to generate friendliness in all directions towards all beings everywhere with no one left out. May all beings everywhere in all directions be well. May all beings everywhere in all directions, none left out. May all beings know peace and ease. This is what we wish. May all beings everywhere, none left out in all directions, be safe and protected. May all beings everywhere know happiness. And may the earth itself heal, and may we heal as part of the earth and expressions of the life force.
Thank you all for your practice. So I'll give you just a moment to stretch or shift your position. So, Diane asked what the topic of my little Dharma talk would be tonight, and I, um, I had just been talking to some Dharma friends about being being in a heart space, creating a field to be inside of, to live in and from that is infused with warmth and kindness and compassion and how painful that is to do sometimes and in particular um, I know for me the past couple of months have been incredibly challenging um, with the what's going on in the world and um, I just want to say that in talking about um, really difficult material, the, you know, the situation that's going on in the Middle East, if that's something that you just don't want to hear about right now, I will not be offended if you um, just want to <laughs> step away or tune out because I know it's it just brings up a lot for different people and um, it can be really difficult to engage with this topic at all. But it's hard for me to not talk about it right now because it is so present for me. Um, and I've just um, been feeling the the truth of that the Buddha taught that we are not separate. that we may be far away in distance from things that are happening and yet they're in our they're still in our field they're still in our um, in the collective space that we all inhabit together and that when something really traumatic is happening, that it, it really affects many of us at a personal and somatic and emotional level. And it can feel like, um, I know I've had moments where I'm kind of like, gosh, what's wrong with me? And then I have to remember, like, I'm really feeling this and um, living in the U.S. and knowing that my government is funding weapons at the exact moment that I so deeply know that um, what really needs resources going towards it is 
uh, repair and extremely skillful communication and um, wisdom, care, justice, understanding. It's, it's extremely, um, it's overwhelming to feel that, um, that there isn't wisdom in the decisions that are being made by the people who have the power to make the big decisions and that, and then to just feel the result of that and how brutal it is. So I am, have been feeling quite battered and bruised and I, you know, sometimes my partner and I look at each other at the end of the day and we just, we just say, it's unbearable, it's unbearable. And there's something in just being able to say that to each other. And know that that's, that's our truth in that moment somehow allows a softening. And that's why I wanted to talk about rooting in the heart because I think we do have the ability to not turn away and not close down. But sometimes it feels like those are the choices. Either you turn away and you can stay soft and stay human or you can take in the truth of what's happening and harden. And I think not only can we stay soft and open and stay in truth, that that's really what is being asked of us. Because what I've noticed is that it's really hard to even have conversations with people about what's going on because there's so much polarizing. And the polarizing is really happening in the space of language. And... um like mental activity. And when I drop into my heart, it's like something else becomes possible. So I've been going out, I'm Jewish and I am connected with Jewish Voice for Peace and I've been going out with Jewish Voice for Peace to um, standouts calling for a ceasefire. And I just really believe in that and want that so desperately and have found this temporary ceasefire to be very, very challenging because I'm so scared of what will come if, you know, if it doesn't the ceasefire doesn't hold going back into this incredible violence again it really scares me there's something about the sense of possibility that's happening right now that feels extra vulnerable and especially as a parent for me um seeing what's happening with so many children 
losing their families and also being killed, it's it's very intense. And I think it is for everybody. There's a particular way that I experience it because of having a 10-year-old. <clears throat> and it really helps me to go and be with people who are saying we want peace and we want justice and clarity and wisdom from our leaders. And I was talking to a friend of mine who's also Jewish, and she was saying, I can't go to those, you know? I don't, some of the things that they chant just really scare me. I feel that, you know, they don't support, even though it's Jewish people, like she feels threatened by it. Like it doesn't support Jewish life. Like what, what the protesters are saying or that they're not understanding where she comes from. And we have different perspectives, you know, and I, had this moment where I thought, oh, I'm supposed to, like something she's saying is against what the people that I'm aligned with believe. But she's my friend. And I could see that she was really scared and upset. And I just let myself listen And I decided I wasn't going to make her wrong. And I wasn't going to make myself wrong for challenging, for not challenging her enough or something like that. I just listened. She already knew where I was coming from because she knew that I was going to the protests. And after listening to her and spending some time with her, A couple of days later, I got a newsletter from someone who's um, kind of a spiritual leader, not in the Buddhist community. She's a, she's a Sikh, and her name is Valerie Cower. I don't know if people know of her, but she has this thing called the Revolutionary Love Project, and she's just really insistent on naming everything that's happening, but also on us all being connected. And one thing that you'll point out is that part of the problem is that people are saying Jewish children, Palestinian children, these people, those people, and she'll say it, they're our children, all of them. And she doesn't say it in a way to dismiss the conflict or say that there's nothing to be worked out. We just need to all come together because it's their complex problems and radical asymmetries. But she says it to say we have we have a place to begin there. And when I got that, I thought about my friend and how she was struggling with all this fear. And I sent her the newsletter. And I thought maybe she'll be mad at me, you know, because this newsletter was talking a lot about harm to Palestinian people. And I didn't hear from her for a couple of days. And then she wrote to me and she said, I loved this. And I, I signed up for this newsletter and I downloaded this thing and I'm going to participate in this action. And I just realized, and it was, I was so happy that there was that opening for her. And I realized that she could receive that email from me because I could listen to her. And I didn't. Shut her down. And I stayed in that place of friendship even though that was hard for me. So I've just been thinking a lot about what it's like to stay in or to keep returning to 
that energy of warmth and friendship and how counterintuitive it can feel right now. But how it's really what what I wish that our leaders knew how to do to really listen and really try to understand. And I think that our practice, our meditation practice is It's really a practice of that, of friendliness and openness and curiosity and like letting it be okay to not know. But also not turning away from the truth, being curious being open to really seeing how things are and meeting that with with kindness and friendliness. And I was talking to a friend about coming here tonight and I said, I just feel so vulnerable right now. Things feel so hard and so brutal. And they were saying, you can just show up with that. And it reminded me that that's, that's one of the gifts of this practice. be with, be with how things are, even when it's really hard. It gets so much harder when we try to make things otherwise. So that's what I wanted to share. I thank you all for your listening. And just looking at the time, yeah, it's a little after. If anyone wants to chat a little bit, I can hang out a little longer. Also just wishing everyone well. And shall we sit for a moment just to close and dedicate the merit? May the merits of our wholesome intention in practicing and of our sincere practice and of our simple presence, may they be of benefit to all of us gathered here and everyone whose lives we touch and all beings everywhere. Thank you. Recording.